Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed Podcast with Bonnie Seratori. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Seratori is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and a founder of Spiritual Acceleration. And you can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com, including all episodes of Consciousness Unleashed. And today we're talking about uh, earth spirits and nature and fairies specifically. We're probably going to get into various different beings that uh, would be under the category of, I guess, earth spirits. I, would you call it that, Bonnie? Is that a good name for like earth beings? Or? Well, they they are. They're like little, well, they're, you know, little sprites, sprites. There's all kinds of little things that okay. are like the fairies and the gnomes. And you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah so there's lots fun. of them. Lots of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Well, then this is going to be a great um, episode because I think a lot of people are curious about these. There's so much myths and folklores and things like that about these different types of beings. And let, let's get to um, the, like the truth of like what they are and, and how we could interact with them maybe. So could you tell us about like the various ones that I'd say are the most common ones that, that you think um, you'd like to share about? Well, I mean, the big one is fairies. You know, people know about fairies. That's very common. So I remember when I was a kid, my, we used to have a book, my mother read, read stories out of a book. Um, and there was one that had fairies. And I was just so enthralled with that one. That was like the major thing was the fairies. And, and then looking out in the gardens and going out in nature and looking for fairies. And, and you know, I have many, many people that did the same thing. You know, like they know that fairies exist. They create little little places for the fairies and, you know, so that they can have their own little places in this dimension. The thing is, is occasionally you can see them. So occasionally they'll present in a way that you can actually see them in with, in this dimension, you can see them with your eyes, but most of the time you're going to have to connect with them and see them and, and sense them by shifting your awareness. Kind of like we do what we do anytime we're doing any kind of psychic work, you know, we're doing, or we're talking telepathically and we're connecting with at different time, space, different dimensions, realities, that type of thing. So we have all these little creatures like fairies that are here that are actually here on planet earth. And sometimes you, you can really feel them, sense them. And, and this is a trip. I was thinking about this because I knew we were going to do the, you know, talk about fairies and, I know this may sound kind of strange, but it's for real happened or it's for real. But when my dog died, this is Lexi. And that's what got me on the, the, you know, trajectory to come to Georgia and all the different things that have happened, life-changing things on my own journey. Um, but after she died, she actually showed me way back in my life when I was young and I was, you know, talking to fairies that she was one of the fairies that was there. So somehow she incarnated into becoming a dog. And, you know, that's what I ended up having with for, for many years. And, and yet when she passed, I mean, she did, she showed me very clearly, like I, she would come to me and then she would show me different things. And so she showed me that connection that we had when she was in the, you know, being a fairy. So that was very cool and clear as day. Like I'm looking at you, I can see it clear, clear, clearly as I'm, you know, it's just like looking in from in this reality right here. So, you know, so there are different, there are many different kinds of fairies. There's little, you know, little ones that are always doing little mischievous things. There's good, there's fairies that, that are really wanting to help humanity or helping people or, you know, connecting with people, connecting with humans, bringing happiness, joy. Sometimes they're hiding things. Sometimes they're like I said, there's some of them are a little mischievous and, and then some of them can get a little mean, you know, a little ornery mean. So, you know what I mean? It's like, there's all kinds of, you know, behaviors that these fairies have and they do have male, female, you know, they got the female fairies and the male fairies and different sizes, different shapes, different in different areas. Like for example, when I go to, when we're in Ireland, seeing the fairies there, they were different than they are here, you know, in where I live in this, in America and the States. So you got different, different vibration, kind of like different people. You know what I mean? It's like, you have people that live in different parts of the world and they have different coloring, different looks to them. And, and the same thing with the fairies, it's just different, you know? And then also when you think about Ireland, remember the leprechauns. So they had the leprechauns, but also in the leprechauns, there's also 
the little gnomes, but there's also fairies in that area of the world that, that where the leprechauns are. So I want to. I know this is this is off, kind of off topic, but not really. But I remember when I um, when I first started doing just removing discarnates, and I started discovering the alien discarnates. And I remember the first time I saw this little pointed ear looking thing inside somebody. And I knew it wasn't from, you know, from our world. And then I discovered that it's from this, they call it, this a red planet that they, that they live in. And it's not too far from the reptilian world. And when I was taking that particular being back to its own time, it got really nervous and didn't want me to get too close to that reptilian world because they actually can come, they're close enough that they can actually come to that planet and cause havoc, which they do. So that was kind of a trip having these experiences. This was way back in the 80s, in the 80s, when I start first started seeing these little leprechaun looking beings. And, and then that, that whole, their species is there. So, you know, sometimes too, like I remember seeing Star Wars and, you know, different, different stories about, about leprechauns or aliens or whatever. And I got really clearly that people were seeing these things. And this is how they came up with some of these ideas, like leprechauns. People had to have been seeing them on some level because you know, they somehow got here, come through the, some kind of veils or through the portals or whatever. And they're here. Same thing with all these creatures that are what I call the reptilians. These guys came in. And again, I first time I ever saw a reptilian in a body was um, in 19, it was in the 80s, 86, 87. It was in a man. I, he even drew a picture of what was inside of him. I still have that to this day in my file. So, yeah, it was, you know, just having these experiences and these be beings being inside of people's bodies, fairies can be inside of people's bodies. And so can all these other little creatures, critters, beings can be in people's bodies. That's mostly how I found them was just, you know, taking out dead people, dead, you know, discarnate energy frequencies. So, yeah, I mean, there's just all, I mean, there's some, I'm, I can shift my awareness right now. And even out here where I'm at, I can just see so many different beings, not just fairies, but all kinds of different looking species, even, even insects. I remember being, I remember seeing, this is also back in the eighties, you know, uh, going in and, and tracking stuff and finding species where there's like these giant ant looking things, or, you know, just these, insect looking creatures that were in other time space, you know? So, I mean, my experience, Cynthia has been like, I see so many different things. And sometimes my mind goes, am I making this up? But my brain doesn't have that kind of making things up ability. You know what I mean? Some people can really open up and make up ideas or come up with these things. I have to see it. I can't even tell a story about something. I have to track something to describe, you know, what's happening. So, you know, I see all these things and it, it gets, it gets a little out there and it's like, wow, alrighty, we got, we got different looking species here. <laughs> so um, I was actually planning to do like an episode next, which is about um, ETs and, and things like that. So that I think, that, you know, it's cool that you brought up some of these topics um, because it'll be a good bridge to like the next episode. Uh, which hopefully we'll talk about ETs and ET implants and things like that. Because I know a lot of your audience really likes that. Uh, it's one of the things that people ask the most in your live Q&As is about ET implants and such. So we could go really deep dive into that. So those who are interested, definitely subscribe and pay attention to uh, the next episodes that are coming out. We're going to definitely be talking a little bit more about the more galactic beings. Um, but going back to the Earth spirits and, and fairs specifically, um, well, where did it, are they actually like fairies, I guess, and maybe some other ones, are they actually from Earth, though? Because you just talked about leprechauns being mm. from another planet. So mm -hmm. are these ones that we typically see here, are many of them actually from Earth? And and like, where do the fairies really come from or, you know, other these mm -hmm, other beings? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, OK, like what's happening right now, just so you understand, like I get the things start dropping into awareness. Like right now, I'm for real. I'm seeing what, like, it looks like this unicorn. It's, it's got the mane on the, is like massively long white mane. It's a beautiful white creature. Horse look, it's a horse, but the, you know, the unicorn. So I'm being, right now, as we're talking, I'm actually being shown different things. So I'm seeing 
that, but I'm also seeing um, fairy energy and um, different, you know, different kind of species. But I'm also being shown that what's happened, it's like this, Cynthia, here we have planet Earth and we're in this dimension, okay? There's overlays of dimensions, okay? Like for example, if I shift my awareness, I can start immediately, I'm actually in, a, in a, an overlaid dimension, like there's 12 different dimensions. Science has proven there's 12 dimensions, okay? That they know of. So as I shift my awareness, then I'm seeing another energy frequency of humans. I can hear them, I can see them very clearly. And it, they're right here. They're in the overlay. They're in another dimension. It's hard to describe because I don't have the words. I don't have any kind of scientific mind to describe things. It's just that I can sense it. I can see it. I can hear it. And this is what's where the fairies came in. It's not that they're from another, you know, like going out into another galaxy or another universe. It's the energy frequency of dimensions overlaying planet Earth. And they're in this dimension. And, you know, there are images that people have created, drawn, whatever. And they're depicting what these energies actually look like. And here's the thing. Many people can sense energies and see things, okay? And it isn't just me. It's millions of people have these abilities. So throughout history, humans have been seeing these energies, even though when we look right here, you know, I'm not going to see it. But if I shift my awareness and go in and I can, then I can start sensing the dimensions. Then I can see like right there, right there. Um, I can see, you know, another little species. And, and, and I think what happens to with children, children's, they're, they're not closed down all the way. So they're able to, the veils aren't shut down. The veils are thin and the child's ability to see things, you know, is much greater when they're really young than when they get older, unless they keep their sight, their senses, their ability to see, sense, hear, taste, smell, energy, they keep that open. Most people close it down, you know, but like little kids, they're always talking to a friend as, you know, little little fairies or whoever and you know people think it's cute and some people know that they're actually talking to somebody and there's someone really there or they think it's oh they're just you know imaginary friends okay but they're not imaginary they're real like i'm not joking right now i'm not i'm telling you honestly God, for real okay <laughs> because we're talking about this they're presenting and I can literally see like sitting right there, standing right there as a fairy. And there's several other ones and they're knowing what we're talking about. And they, and they're, I can hear their, I can hear them laughing and they just think it's a riot that we're talking about these fairies, you know, in another time, space, another dimension. Would they like to share a message? Oh, let me see. Hang on, hang on. This one, this one, she's just laughing. She's just laughing. There's another one. He's trying to be serious. He's a guy. He's a boy, male. And the girl's like, she's just cracking up. Okay, hang on. Let me just calm, see if I can get her to just slow down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the message. They would actually like more people to play with, to play with them. They would actually like not just children, not just children. They would actually, okay. They would like the peoples that saw them when they were little to remember them and then to op open back up to be able to see them because they're telling me that once they have a connection with a human, that they kind of state that they have that, that connection is always there. Uh, the only thing that would change is, for example, like let's just say that a human lived in a certain town and then they moved. The fairies aren't going to relocate, okay? But, you know, those the people that are in the general vicinity where they had their childhood, where they were communicating with the fairies, you know, they, there's something about long term friendship. You know, what I mean, it's like you saw them when you were little and now you're an adult and you've kind of pushed it away. But now if you open that door back up, then you can then there can be a deeper kind of communication. There can be a different different kind of connection to these 
little little fairies. So it's a trip because I know this sounds so friggin' weird, you guys, but it's happening. The guy, the little male guy, he's literally like reaching over, wanting to, you know, wanting to touch my finger. So I'm just, you know, we're, I'm just doing that. And I can, oh, now she wants to do it too. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah. So yeah, they're, they're liking it. It's like, it's, it's, it's like, there's an acknowledgement that they're there, that, 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 you know, I can see them, sense them, they can see and sense me and we're actually connecting, you know, and it's a trip because it's okay. If I can describe it, it's like, it's not quite the same. Like if there was another person in the room and I was talking to them and connecting, but there is that same quality. So even though like if someone came in, they wouldn't see them unless they shifted their awareness, but it still feels like they're right here. Okay. I mean, they are right here, but I can feel them. I can feel them. Okay. I can, it's not just the, the physical feeling of them, but I feel their energy. I feel their presence. I feel them. Okay. And then I just want to mention too, um, when I was in, remember the, when I sent to my, our team an email about being in New Mexico and clearing the land. Okay. Those beings, not everyone went home into the light. Many stayed to help continue battle the darkness and the evil and things that are happening. But I'm with these beings every single day, Cynthia. Ever since we did that, every day I spend time with these be peoples on the on these other dimensions. And sometimes we're just hanging out talking, whatever. And sometimes we're doing stuff. And I'm like one of the main people that can do shift energies and, and deal with some of the most intense stuff. So they always want me to be there. You know, if they had their way, they, I'd be there all the time. But I do I spend a lot of time hanging out on these on the astral planes with all these be peoples. A lot of them are Native American. The one guy, uh, his, his, his name is Lightning Bear Claws, but I shortened it, shortened it to Bear Claws. And he, all the elders that are still here, but there's a bunch of them that are that have stayed to continue the battle with the energies that are on the earth plane that have come through. So lots of cool stuff is happening that people have no clue about. But these little guys, they're just really liking that we've opened this portal, so to speak, that I can feel them, sense them, and they can also feel and sense me. But that's kind of, it's cool. I can really, it's like right there. So for those who uh, may want to reopen that and connect with these fairies again, um, what are just some of the suggestions to actually connect with them and interact with them? Okay. Okay. So what they're saying is re just to remember when, when they were young, when, remember when you were young, remember when you were talking with the fairies, you were communicating with the fairies, you were playing, some people actually were playing with them. And it's, it's all it is, is just remembering that and you can open up those memories and then open up those memories. Then you begin to open up your senses to be able to sense these energy frequencies again. But remember, if you're living, you know, across another state or whatever, the only way you'll you, it won't be like being in the same room with them because most of them are outside. They got their own, you know, their own little areas. These guys. These guys, wow, there's there's so many here. It's like I didn't really pay attention before, but now as we're talking and I'm just shifting my awareness, I can see a lot, like there's a lot. And if you saw my land, there's all these little areas where it's all ferns and, and um, growth, but, you know, so there's lots of areas where there's places where would be ideal for for fairies where they like to live, you know, but coming back to your question, yeah, it's really about the desire to, you know, that having the desire that, oh yeah, I want to remember, I want to reconnect. Some people actually had a bond with some of these fairies. Okay. They're going to, they know they had a bond. They know it. They may have pushed it away, forgotten about it, but maybe some people might be watching this and all of a sudden they'll be going, that's right. I did have a bond, you know? And then, the, then they can open back up. I mean, they could communicate with them and sense them because we're still dealing with astral planes, you know, alternate realities. 
but it's going to be different because like I said, like if I were, if I went back to California or back to Colorado or wherever I've been, these guys that these particular ones wouldn't be here in order for me to connect with the ones that I grew up with. I need to go to where I was that area where I was. Okay. Cause that's where they're at. They're, they're not moving around. Okay. Humans are moving around, but yeah, I mean, it's a cool thing. There's something really cool about it. I don't know how to, how do you describe it? It's like, Oh, wow. I see. I don't know these. I don't know these because these are I've never really communicated with them. But since we you opened the door for this, Cynthia, they just presented. And now we're now we're connecting. And and now then they're showing me all these other things that are out there. I mean, they even have their own species of like butterflies or flying insects or bees, things that, you know, that we have. They have their own only different in their, you know, in their reality. So it's, it's very cool. I mean, now I'm really hearing hearing the noises, hearing the sounds. Whoa, getting real busy. Now I really, yeah, it's kind of a trip. All right, thanks for sharing all that, Bonnie. I'm sure there's a lot of people listening who may want to reconnect and open that uh, relationship back up and uh, definitely grow with, uh, with their fairy friends. So uh, I do want to ask about maybe some other beings like Bigfoot. Is Bigfoot like an Earth being from Earth, and or is Bigfoot a guardian <laughs> of the Earth? And right, nature? right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bigfoot, a lot of Bigfoot activity over in Crestone when I was there um, a few years. I used to take people to, there for classes, program, whatever, and um, had to do some major stuff there. But Bigfoot is huge there, and. I've got connections to Bigfoot and it's the same, it's kind of the same. Um, they're, they're in they're they're very real. Okay. And partly why people see them is it's the same thing with the fairies. Sometimes the veils get really thin or pe- our energies can literally come through. Like for example, for example, you know how sometimes in a haunted house or a place where there's discarnates or a dead person, they can sometimes you hear doors closing or foot making walking uh, drawers. You know what I mean? You hear sounds, think you see things moving, whatever. Okay, but you don't see the spirit. But what's happening is it's like they're coming through, and it's like piercing the veils. The it's piercing the dimensions. So there's sometimes like for example, Bigfoot people that have seen that. And then he's gone. They can't find him. There's no trail. There's no nothing. Okay. They exist, but not here. Kind of like the fairies are in another time space, alternate reality. So are the Bigfoot in a different reality. Okay. And depending on your connection with them, like I do have a connection with them. um, And I don't spend time with them, but I can actually, like I, I can actually open my awareness and I can go to areas where I've been, where I know they've been, where they where they are, which is in Crestone, and I can start to connect with them. But watch what I'm doing. I'm not right. I'm not here. Well, my body's here, but my awareness. I'm taking it to Crestone. I'm taking it to an area that I that I've been when I did connect with with Bigfoot. Okay, and again, they're they're on another dimension overlaying this dimension okay so how do i how does one explain that it's kind of like well you know think about science that there's 12 dimensions overlaying that means there's 12 different things happening that i could shift my awareness and go into 12 different time space right here on planet earth okay so yeah so these beings or creatures are they're living and existing in another dimension, even though it's right here on planet Earth. Do Bigfoot sometimes actually come into this dimension a little bit? Because people have, uh, you know, reported they see like the footprints and stuff. So obviously they may have, yeah. to, you know, come in sometimes yeah. to this one and then just go back. Some of these there's Sasquatch, they like, they like that people are seeing footprints, but if you pay attention you're going to only see a couple footprints or maybe even one, and then you won't find any more. Okay. So they like having that mystery. They like that on some level, it's like people are knowing that it's real, but they can't prove it. 
I mean, it most uh, probably all of the visual, all of the photos that have ever been taken really aren't, you know, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, but because um, they're not, you know, they come in, but they're, they're not hanging here. They, they don't stay here. It's almost like, okay, like I have, by, I have bilocated once. I could, I couldn't do it again. I've tried, but I couldn't do it. It was it just, it was something that I was doing and then it happened and then boom, and then try to recreate it. I couldn't, but there's an intention, like they intentionally want to be seen. They intentionally want to be known. They intentionally are coming in and in and out, you know, not all of them, but some, some definitely. And then there's different areas where they're more popular, so to speak. And I mean, like, that Crestone area is huge for, for Bigfoot. And then there's other parts of the country, other parts of the world where they're going to have people who have had sightings and, you know, and um, try to get pictures of them, uh, but they won't, you know, they're, they're pretty quick. You know, it's like, it'd be like, you know, you might see one and then all of a sudden it's gone, you know, and you can't find it. You can't find any evidence of it. Okay. That's because they're moving through the veils. They're moving through. They're piercing. I call it veils. It's like an energetic frequency, almost like a force field. But creatures from all time, space, dimensions get through. Remember, I was. Some people will hear me talk about these little octopus-looking creatures that are in people's bodies. They're very benign. They're very gentle. They're never. They're not trying to cause harm, but somehow they get through. And then they, you know, they go into a body because they can't function here. And then we, most of them just want to go back to their own time and space, but things pierce through, come through the veils. Okay. When I say veils, let's get really clear. Like if you were looking at like a sheer cloth, you know what I mean? Like when you put a shears up on the window, you can kind of see through them. Okay. So you can see through those, they're, they're like veils. And so there's, there are different thicknesses of veils to, to where there's, you can't see through them. But as they thin, then you can see through them. When you see through them, that's when things pierce these, the energy field and pierce these veils and enter into this reality right here where we see them, right here, okay? So different, different reasons, different causes, energetic stuff, planetary stuff, all kinds of different reasons happen, how they sometimes get come through. Okay. Sometimes these creatures don't want to come through and all of a sudden they're here, you know, and most of them, like I said, want to go back to their own time and space, back to their own dimensions. But yeah, there's so, oh, Cynthia, it's crazy, crazy, all the different species that are actually here. But we know of like, we know about fairies, we know about gnomes, you know what I mean? We know about Bigfoot. So there's different things that are that we've got history, fable, you know, stories passed down about Native Americans saw many, many of the Bigfoot. And there's there's yeah, yeah, yeah. Up in the um, like a, up in the higher areas like Canada and places like that, there's a lot happening up there. Okay. So they're more they're they're more in cooler areas of the, you know what I mean? Like cooler areas, not so much down in like where you're going to go on down to Mexico or something, or, you know, where starts South America, where it starts to get really hot. You're going to get more in the cooler mountainy kind of areas for those, for those beings. When I typically think of different, uh, like earth beings and spheres, I always relate that to like nature in, in general and, and the earth's well-being. And so are many of these beings really working towards having harmony, like maybe even with humans, making them aware of like having a more, more harmonious relationship to nature and the earth? Is that something that's true? Yes and no. Okay. Yes. There are species who are very, okay. I, I'm going to back up a little bit. There are what I call the little ones, the little ones on planet earth. These are all the microorganisms that build all the the, the flora, the, the stuff that makes the earth healthy, uh, okay? There's all these things that are happening. We have interferences, like there's sp sp specific aliens who want to interfere and stop that because if they do that, if they damage that, then they destroy the earth. You, you know what I'm saying? It's just the foundation of the earth, uh, the land, the dirt, everything. You need it. Then we have another species, and I can one of them is one of my students who's also does amazing work. Um, he 
it was one of the ones that came to protect the land and protect the little ones from these other aliens that's trying to destroy it, okay? So we have things that are happening on many levels, trying to make sure the earth is maintained, but all these little, these little beings, these little energy frequencies that are here, the little ones are, are you know, they're all here. And then too, the fairies and the different, some of the different species, some of them are very committed to maintaining the, the microcosms and make, main, making sure that people are maintaining, sustaining and caring for the lands. That's their desire. Then you get other ones that are, you know, that aren't, that don't really have any caring or attachment, but they're not causing harm, but they're also not connecting with people or trying to give messages or trying to get imprinting people with a thought or desire. Oh, pick up the trash. Oh, let's just clean the, let's just clean this up. Oh, let's maybe bring some water here. You know what I mean? Whether it's that you have, it's like it comes from within. So these little, these little beings can send those kind of feeling sense desires that helps people to have that desire. They don't, you know, it's just like an impetus, like a desire to, to do something or, you know, like even walking on the grass or something. Oh, you won't step on that. You know what I mean? It's like, there's certain things you won't step on because you know, maybe your mind isn't thinking it, but there's a whole little universe underneath that little, you know, that whole area that people just stomp on unconsciously. You know what I mean? Like, People go to places like Yosemite or Yellowstone and they do stupid stuff, like step on stuff where they shouldn't be. You know what I mean? So, you know, you're always going to have ignorant humans that do that kind of thing. And then you have other humans that are plugged in that have caring and, and that they also have a, a connection to all these spirit worlds, whether they know it or not. That's what's kind of cool. Not everybody remembers, but, but you're going to, it's going to happen when you when you were young. You know what I mean? Your connection with the spirit realms is going to happen when you were little. You may or may not remember, but as you're listening to this, you might have some kind of feeling or sense of or desire to connect. What you really want is a reconnect, okay? So it's awakening the 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 connection you've already got with these little little beings, all the little different species of creature beings that we've got in these alternate realities. All right, thank you for all that information, Bonnie. This is a really great episode so far. It, I really love all the information about um, how to reconnect with these types of beings and just, or even just connect. Like if maybe uh, people want to have a connection um, that they didn't have before with like, for example, fairies, you definitely gave a lot of great information on how, to, how we could do that. So the next episode, we're gonna be getting more into ETs. And Bonnie definitely did talk about a lot of that today which I thought was really great. It's a great segue to the next episode. So definitely subscribe if you're new um, so you could, uh, you won't want to miss that. In that episode, I probably will talk about something I didn't today with different, like human souls being from off planet or those from earth. I'll save that for the yeah. next episode. It's somewhat related to this one because we're talking about earth specifically, but yeah, um, yeah. so for those who really want to know about that, you're going to have to <laughs> follow us on all of our social media accounts. And but before that, before I end, Bonnie, is there any last things you want to say about the, today's topic? Yeah. I, I mean, I think that I think people, a lot of people believe in these things and a lot of people don't believe in them. So for me, it's really not about a belief. It's about the, the actual sensing of reality of, of creatures and species and beings that actually exist. And that I think it's a, a great thing for humans to expand their awareness and to be open to, there are so many other things out there that we really don't know about and how cool it is to connect with some of these species. Cause some of them are just characters. Some of them are so much fun. And like right now, again, that, that unicorn's presenting. I'm just wondering, uh huh, that's what's up. Okay. So sometimes when something presents, that means I got to go do something. So there's some kind of something I'm going to be helping with. But yeah, I mean, people, it's like, have fun, open up. I mean, it brings smiles, it brings joy, it feels good. Why not? You know, why not? So another question, since you just brought up the unicorns, are they galactic or are they from here? Where are they from? Okay, hang on. Are they actually, no, they're not galactic. All right, again, okay, yes. They're in that same kind, okay. 
This is cool, Cynthia. Remember I was talking about the 12 different dimensions, okay? These particular beings are in the same dimension like the unicorn and the fairies and the species, this, these kinds of beings, they're in the same dimension, okay? So the unicorns are coming from the dimension that, this, that the fairies are in. It's almost like, you know, a lot of our stories, a lot of our, like even Peter Pan and you see Tinkerbell, you know what I'm saying? All these, these stories that, that they, they tell and even the, you know, like having um, like unicorns and, and different species, like even dragons, even the dragons, okay? Um, you know, they're going to be in a, a different time space other different dimensions, but they're, they're just as real. Like if we start spending time there, then that becomes real. Like this is real. Do you know what I'm saying? So spending time, we start transitioning into those time times. And then that becomes, we, you know, we start to feel it, live it like, it, like we are right here, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, anyone can do it, you know, just having that desire. And these being, yeah, most, I mean, unless you're like an evil person that wants to cause harm, to destroy, but mostly, you know, most people are going to come because there's an open heart. There's, there's a remembering, there's a knowing that they've got a connection, you know, some kind of connection to these, these beings, which is really cool. One last thing, Bonnie, <laughs> since you just mentioned dragons, I remember you told me before that everybody has a dragon and you used to do, I think you used to do like meditations or guide, like you would guide people to meet their dragon. Is that something you would be open to doing a video in the future for YouTube and it takes people into meeting their dragon? Would you be open to do something like that? I would. And just to be clear, not, not everyone has a dragon. Okay. Not everyone. Okay. A lot of people do. I just have to tell really quickly. I have these people that I've um, longtime friends that I've known and, um, he always comps me cool places when I come to visit, but he, he's now got four boys and the, I'm going to, I actually bought the boys dragon eggs with dragons in them. And we're going to go, I'm going to take them and we're going to go meet their dragons because they have dragons and we're going to pull back the dragon spirits and put them in the little dragons to watch, to be with them as they're growing up. So that's going to be very cool. All right, cool, Bonnie. Awesome stories in this episode. I had a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Everybody, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like, subscribe, comment below. Let us know what you think. If you feel like we missed a species you wanted to talk, you wanted us to talk about, let us know in the comments. Maybe we'll cover it in another episode. And for those listening on Apple or Spotify or any of those other podcast platforms, please leave us a review. It really helps us out. If you want to catch more of what Bonnie does, check us out at spiritualacceleration.com. All right. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Mm -hmm.